In this video, we're going to look at linear and quadratic inequalities. Let's start off by looking at some inequalities that you might have seen before. We might have x is strictly greater than 4. We might be asked to state some integer values that satisfy this inequality. So all we're looking for are values that make this statement true. So an integer is just a whole number. So in this particular case, we could have 5, we could have 6, we could have 7, we could have 10,000, we could have a million. We can't have 4, as this is strict and it doesn't include 4. We might have, now, y is less than or equal to 3. So this time we could include 3. We're looking for all numbers, 3 or less. So y could be 1, it could be minus 10, it could be minus 50. They are examples of integer values that satisfy that inequality. Of course, we could have decimals, we could have fractions. So I could, for example, put 1 half. I could put minus 0 0.2. Another example that you might have seen, we might have, for example, p. p is going to be strictly greater than 1, yet in turn less than or equal to 4. We might be asked to state all of the integer values that satisfy this inequality. So we could have 2, 3 and 4. We can't have 1 as it doesn't include it. Throughout the video, we're going to look at both linear and quadratic inequalities. To start with, I just want to recap some basic terminology and notation. So let's pick up from this point right here. If we have now x is strictly greater than 4, we have now a strict inequality. If we wanted to express this on a number line, we could go ahead and do that. If we got a strict inequality, we have now an open dot. So we would locate 4 on the number line and we would look at all values to the right. So now we've got 5, we've got 6 and so on and so forth. So if we consider now, is now the number I'm looking for bigger than 4? Well, quite clearly 6 is bigger than 4, so we could see that we've done the correct thing. Let's have a look at the next one. x is going to be less than some value and strictly less. So for example, if we had now 2, we're looking for all numbers that are less than 2. On a number line, we would have an open dot. So the open dot corresponds to the strict inequality. We would locate the number 2 on a number line. So we could have now 1, we could have 0, we could have minus 1, and so on and so forth. Again, 2 would not be included. So is minus 1 less than 2? Quite clear it is. Therefore, it satisfies this inequality. Let's look now at another one x is going to be greater than or equal to 5. So this time we can include 5. We would locate that on a number line and we'd use a solid dot. So if it's inclusive of, we use the solid dot. So we could have 5, we could have 6, we could have 7 and we could keep going to the right. So is 7 at least 5? The answer is quite clearly yes. So it satisfies that inequality. Let's look at another one x is going to be less than or equal to minus 1. So if we located now minus 1 on a number line, we would have the solid dot like so. And let's go ahead and do that. We'd have now minus 1 just here. And then we would look at all values to the right. So I could have now minus 2. We could have minus 3. So could we say now, does this hold true? Is minus 1 at least the size of minus 3? Clearly it is. So this would now satisfy that inequality. An inequality simply links two or more statements and involves these symbols. So another example might be now that uh, let's go for x is going to be strictly greater than minus 1, yet in turn less than or equal to 10. So this is an example of an inequality. We've got a statement and we're including it now the symbols that we've just looked at. So let's look at an example of solving an inequality. When we're solving inequalities, we use a lot of the skills that we've learned to solve equations. So let's start off now with an inequality. So we've got 5x minus 2 is strictly greater than 8. What we're looking to do is find the values of x that make this statement true or satisfy the inequality. So as with our algebra, we would add now, or I should say solving our equations in algebra, we'd add 2 to both sides. So 5x will be strictly greater than 10. This is a positive number. I divide both sides by 5, so we've got 10 over 5. So we could say that x is going to be greater than 2. 
So if we do that, x is strictly greater than 2. If you were asked to express this on a number line, we'd locate 2 on the number line. It wouldn't include the 2, and we'd look at all values. So let's test the point. I often test 0. If we test 0, we know that this isn't included, so we'd have the right part. Is 0 minus 2 greater than 8? The answer is quite clearly no, so we have the correct region. Often this is called the critical value, and you'll see this more as we look at the quadratic examples. So that's a nice example now of a straightforward linear inequality, and we found the values of x that satisfy it. Let's look at another example. Let's say we've got an unknown on both sides. So x is our variable. We've got 4x plus 3 is going to be less than or equal to, and let's go for 2x plus 8. So at this stage, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So I've got 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to 8. Subtracting 3 from both sides. So we've got 2x is less than or equal to 5. And dividing both sides by 2, we're going to have 5 over 2, or 2.5. Two I always prefer to work with fractions, especially if it's non-calculator. So we've got an, uh, an inclusive inequality, and we'll locate now the point just here. This is going to be 5 over 2. So we could have 2 just here, we could have 1 just here, we could have 0. Now, when I'm talking about these number lines, you'll often have a number line for yourself. So you might have now the number line just here, and let's just put uh, the origin of 0, 0 just here, and you'd have it numbered up. So, for example, you'd have now the 1, let's put here the 1, you'd have 2, you'd have 3, and then all you would do is simply place this on. I'm just writing the values below. So we'd do something like so. So it'd look like that. And then you'd label that point up. So it's all values now to the left, and you obviously continue that. So let's check now that we've got the correct region, or we've got the correct values that satisfy this inequality. So let's choose naught. So naught plus 3. Is that less than or equal to naught plus 8? Well, quite clearly, 3 is less than 8. So we have the correct region. So that's another example of a basic linear inequality. Now, in both of these examples that we've looked at, we've been dividing through the inequality by a positive number. If we multiply an inequality or divide an inequality by a negative number, we need to change the sign round. Let's look at an inequality that holds true. So let's say uh, now we've got minus 2. That's going to be now, let's say we've got less than or equal to 4. Now, if this had been an equation, what I could have done, let's just think about this uh, logically. I'm going a bit off the, the sort of the scale a bit here, but hopefully this will make sense. If I multiply both sides of this by minus 1, I'm going to get 2, and then I'm going to end up with minus 4. Now, that certainly no longer holds true. Yet with an equation, it would have done. So we can see here that we should now be right writing that 2 is going to be now greater than or equal to minus 4. So whilst those numeric values don't make an awful lot of sense, you can see that if I'm multiplying or dividing by that negative number, we need to change the inequality sign around. So let's look at an example of that in action. Let's say we've got now minus, uh, let's go for minus 2x plus 3 is going to be, and we'll go for strictly less than 11. So what I'm going to do is subtract 3 from both sides of the inequality. So we've got now, uh, that's going to give me 8. Now at this stage, I'm going to divide both sides of the inequality by minus 2. So we need to swap the sign around, and that's going to be minus 8 over 2. So we can say that x will be strictly greater now than minus 4. So again, we would check that, we'd locate that if we wanted on the number line, and check now a value. So if we consider now 0, let's put in 0. If we put in 0, 0 plus 3, is that less than 11? Quite clearly it is. So once we've done that, we have the correct region. So if we did that, let's just put this on at minus 4, then we've done that. So that's one way that you could look at it. An alternative, way, uh, uh, alternative when you're dealing with these is to rewrite this. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. We've got minus 2x plus 3 is going to be strictly less than 11. I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So we've got 3 is strictly less than 11 plus 2x. I'm now going to subtract 11 from both sides. So minus 8 is strictly less than 2x and divide by the positive 2. So we've got minus 8 over 2 is strictly less than x. 
so we can say that x is going to be strictly greater than minus 4. And we can see by switching it round at that point, that was something that we could do. I prefer to get used to this idea of dividing through. When you come on to uh, working with, uh, for example, the geometric sequences and series, when you're looking at working with logarithms, it's really, really quite important that you can understand when you're dividing through by a negative number. And just be on your guard. It's probably the number one error students make when they're working with these geometric sequences and series later on. It's not understanding that you need to change that inequality sign around. Okay, let's look at some more inequalities. Let's say we've got now, uh, let's go for 3x plus 1. And we've got 3x plus 1 is going to be greater and strictly greater than 13. And we might have 3x plus 1 is going to be less than or equal to 19. In this case, we've got now a statement here, 3x plus 1, and a statement here, 3x plus 1. We can actually go ahead and combine this as one inequality. So we'll have 3x plus 1 will be strictly greater than 13, yet in turn less than or equal to 19. When we have this scenario, all we do is continue as we would be solving an equation. We're going to subtract 1 from each part of the inequality. So what I'm trying to do here is solve essentially for a, a value or a set of values for x. So if I take 1 from each part, 12, we've got 3x, and then we've got uh, 18. Dividing through the inequality by a positive number, so I don't need to change this around, 4x and 6. So all I've done is simply now strip this down to x. So x is strictly greater than 4, yet in turn less than or equal to 6. So we've only got two integer values that satisfy this, and that would be 5 and 6. We've got infinitely many decimal answers and fractional answers, but if we were asked for integer values, that's what we'd have. Now, if we wanted to show this on a number line, we would now go ahead and do that. We would locate 4 and 6. We'd have 6 just here, and we'd have 4 here. We're inclusive on this one, so we need a solid dot. We've got a strict inequality here, so we'd leave it. And again, if you wanted to test the point, test 5, and see that it holds for both of these. So if we tested 5 right here, we can see 15 plus 1, clearly bigger than 13. 15 plus 1 is less than 19. So that holds true. So this now is the, uh, the region, or I should say, the values that satisfy this equation for x. So that's an example of combining two inequalities to write it as one and solve it. Okay, let's look at another one. Let's say we've got another linear inequality. Now, when I'm talking about a linear inequality, I mean that the variable, the highest power on the variable is just one. So this is x to the first. It's not x squared, it's not x cubed, it's not x to the fourth. Later on, we will look at examples of quadratic, but when I say linear, it's just x. So what we've got here is, let's go for x minus one is strictly less than 2x minus 4, and in turn, that is going to be less than or equal to, let's go for, uh, let's have x plus 14. Now, at this stage, what I'm going to do is split this up. Now, if I split this up, I'm going to consider this inequality here. So, I'm going to have x minus 1 is strictly less than 2x minus 4, and solve for this one. Then what I'm going to do is consider now 2x minus 4 is less than or equal to x plus 14, and then deal with that one. So let's subtract x from both sides and add 4. So we've got x is going to be strictly greater than 3. So that now solves the 1 just here. Let's look at this one. I'm going to subtract an x from both sides and add 4. So we've got x is less than or equal to 18. So what we have is this scenario. Now let's look at this. So what we've got, if we combine these, x is going to be strictly greater than 3, yet in turn less than or equal to 18. So again, we could just place this on a number line if we wished. I think with a number line, it's just uh, another alternative representation. And of course, you won't always be asked to do it. So let's put 18 and 3 just here. And you might want to test an integer value to check that these hold true. What I'm going to do is choose naught. Naught will not satisfy this. So that gives me minus 1. And then we've got minus 4 and 14. So we can see that if I sub in naught here, this doesn't hold true, as minus 4 is not greater than minus 1. So we have the correct region just here, and again, you might want to test a value in there to confirm that's true, and another on the other side just to check that it doesn't.
So that's a nice example of splitting now the inequality into two different inequalities. Let's do another one similar to that one. Let's say we've got now, let's go for, uh, we'll take 3x plus 2, and that is going to be less than or equal to x minus 1, and in turn, that will be less than or equal, let's go for 2x minus 4. So splitting it up, we got 3x plus 2 is less than or equal to x minus 1, and then we got x minus 1 is less than or equal to 2x minus 4. So let's deal with this one. We'll subtract now x from both sides. So we got 2x and subtract 2. That gives me minus 3. Dividing through now by a positive number, we've got x is going to be less than or equal to minus 3 over 2. Now with this one, what I'm going to do is subtract an x from both sides and then add 4. So I'm going to have 3. So we'll have x will be greater than or equal to 3. Now let's look at this x is going to be less than or equal to minus 3 over 2, and we've also got x is going to be greater than or equal to 3. What this gives us now is two particular regions. So we've got now a break in our region. So let's go ahead and locate these, and we'll have now the value just here of minus 3 over 2, and then we'll have the value just here of 3. So we can say now that x will be less than or equal to minus 3 over 2, or x will be greater than or equal to 3, and this would be our number line. So for example, 5 will satisfy both. We've got now here, minus 2 will satisfy both, but for example, 0 wouldn't. So if we put in 0, 2, minus 1, and then minus 4, you can see that that doesn't hold true, and that's the gap that we've got now in the set of values for x. So just be careful, here we have an example of two different particular regions. Okay, so far we've looked now at all examples of, that have been linear inequalities. So the highest power of x was x to the first. We're now going to look at quadratic inequalities. So if we have a quadratic inequality, we'll have a term with an x squared in, or a p squared, or a y squared. The highest power of x will be a squared term. Let's start off with a nice example. Let's start off with x squared. We'll go for minus x minus 12 is going to be greater than or equal to 0. We've got now a quadratic expression on the left-hand side of this inequality. That's going to factor x minus 4, and then we're going to have x plus 3. And that's greater than or equal to 0. Now, if this was a, an equation, we would solve, and we call these the critical values. We're going to have 1 at 4, and then 1 at minus 3. And we just simply now put these on a number line. So what I'm going to do is graph a parabola. So I've got my critical values, and you might want to write those down, of positive 4, so let's put that just here, and then negative 3. So drawing the parabola, we've got something that looks like so. So a quick sketch, doesn't have to be immaculate, it'll give you some idea of what it looks like. The point just here is positive 4, the point just here now is negative 3. What we want to know is where is this at least 0? Well, here is 0. Now, we can see that it's going to be above the x-axis, which is above 0, at these points right here. And quite clearly, it's going to continue this way right here. It's not above or equal to 0 just here. So, for example, now, if we chose 0, so the origin, if I subbed in 0, We've got 0 minus 0 minus 12, which is quite clearly not greater or equal than 0, greater, greater than or equal to 0. So what we're looking at are these two particular regions. We can say that x will be less than or equal to minus 3, or x will be greater than or equal to positive 4. So we've got minus 3 and positive 4. So all I've done is taken a sketch. I've found what we call the critical values. I've gone ahead and said to myself, now x is going to be less than or equal to minus 3, or x is going to be greater than or equal to 4. At this stage, go ahead and test the regions. Check you've got it correct. I've just shown you 0. If you put in 5, if we consider now 5, 25, minus now 5 is 20, minus 12 is going to give us 8. That is going to be bigger than 0, so that is included. If you want to test one over here, Go ahead and do it and you'll see. So that's an example now of solving a straightforward 
quadratic inequality. So let's try another one. Let's go ahead and look at x squared. So we'll have x squared plus, let's go for 10x, minus 4. And that's going to be strictly less than, uh, let's go for 6x minus 7. So when you solve a quadratic equation, you uh, a quadratic equation, you put this in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. What I'm going to do is put this in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is less than zero. So if I subtract six x from both sides, I've got now x squared. Then I'm going to have plus four x, and then I'm going to add seven to both sides. So that's going to give me now plus three, and that's less than zero. Factoring x plus 1, what's that going to be? x plus 3. So that's worked out quite nicely. So this time we can see we've got our critical values. So if you want to put them down here, it's a critical values, you don't need to. x will be equal to minus 1. x will be equal to minus 3. So straight off with a sketch. So here comes our sketch. All we've got now are our two critical values. We're going to place them on. This is going to be now minus 1. We'll have minus 3 just here. So minus 3 minus 1. It's a positive parabola. It's opening upwards. We'll come round, straight back through like so, and up there. Where is this strictly less than 0? Well, it's less than 0 in this part right here. So what we can say now is that x will be greater than now minus 3, yet in turn less now than minus 1. And do check that you get a most the right way around. Often it's minus 1 and minus 3. If we just check now, if we wanted to put in minus 2, we could put in minus 2. If we wanted to test 0, we could test 0. If we wanted to test minus 5. So you could look at the regions. We're looking for where this is strictly less than 0. So don't get too caught up in it. Just go ahead and graph them and put them on a number line. Test the points and go from there. OK, let's look at another one. Let's go for uh, minus x squared. So we'll have minus x squared plus 7x is going to be less than or equal to, let's go for x, uh, let's go for x minus 18. Now, this looks like we've got a negative quadratic and often pupils want to draw a negative quadratic and then they're not quite sure which way round it goes. All we need to do here is rearrange this. So I'm going to get 0 and that now we're going to have the x squared, so adding x squared to both sides. I'm going to subtract now the, what am I going to have? That's going to be, uh, so subtracting 7x from both sides. So that's going to give me minus 6x. And then we're going to have now minus 18. So what we've got here now is a quadratic expression on now the right-hand side. And we've also got at this stage now, it's set here. We've got zero here. So this is going, this quadratic expression will be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, can we factor this? Uh, we're looking at it, I don't think we can. So all I'm going to do is complete the square. So we'll have x minus 3, all squared. Then we're going to have now minus, that's going to give me minus 9, so minus 9, minus 18. So we've got now this expression, and we've got x minus 3, all squared, minus 27. Now, just be a little careful with this. What we're going to do is consider now critical values. If I went ahead and solved this, I'd add 27 to both sides and square root. So our critical values, x is going to be 3 plus or minus the square root of 27. Or we could say x is 3 plus or minus 3 root 3. So if you went ahead and solved that, so solved it like an equation, to find the critical values. So these are our critical values. So if we just put these on a number line, let's go ahead and do that. What we'll have is the following. So if we have 3 plus 3 root 3, then we'll have a value over here. So let's do that. Let's just put it here. Okay, it doesn't have to be massively accurate. This is going to be 3 plus 3 root 3. And then we're going to have 1 over here, and we're going to have here, and this is going to be 3 minus 3 root 3. So straight now, what we'll have is something that looks like so. So here's our parabola. We'll come up like that. And what we want to know is whether this is going to be greater than or equal to 0. We can see that it's greater than or equal to 0 just here. So all I'm doing is shading out now the regions that satisfy this inequality. Here is 0. Where is it above this line? Well, it's not above the line just here, so that's not included. So we could say at this stage, x is less than or equal to 3 minus 3 root 3, 
or we can say that x is going to be greater than or equal to 3 plus 3 root 3. So a bit more algebra involved there. All I'm doing is considering the critical values. By setting this equal to 0, finding them, and then considering now where it's greater than or equal to now that value. And that value just here is 0. OK, let's do another one. So that one was uh, a bit more challenging. Let's say we've got now 2 and then we've got the quantity x plus 4. And that's going to be strictly greater than 3x squared. So again, a quadratic. So we've got 2x plus 8 is strictly greater than 3x squared. So quadratic expression, left-hand side set to 0. 3x squared minus 2x. And then we're going to have now, what's that going to give me? Minus 8. So we've got a quadratic. That looks like it's going to factor. Let's have a go at factoring this. What are we going to have? 3x. Uh, let's go for 3x plus 4. And then we're going to have, what's that going to be? x minus 2. So let's just check that. 3x squared uh, minus 6x plus 4x minus, uh, minus 8. So that looks like it's going to factor. That looks like it has. So let's go ahead now and find our critical values. So our critical values are going to be minus 4 over 3 and then positive 2. So let's do that. So minus 4 over 3, which I'll put just here, minus 4 over 3. And then we've got now positive 2. So let's put positive 2 here. So now quadratic, graph, parabola, sketch it up like so. Uh, that should really go through there. Let's just put this on like so. Now we want to know where this is less than 0. Well, it's less than 0 in this part right here. We want to know where that's below the x-axis. So what we can do is write out inequality. x is going to be strictly greater than minus 4 thirds. And in turn, uh, we're going to say strictly greater than minus 4 thirds. And in turn, strictly less than 2. So that now is the set of values for x that satisfy this inequality. Again, when you're doing these, check them. I'm suggesting on each time that you do check the critical values and put, look at the numbers that you've put in to make sure you have the correct region. So test the point here, test the point here, and test the point to the right. Let's now move on and look at another example. Let's look at this one right here. Uh, we've got 36x squared is going to be greater than or equal to, let's go for 49. Now, a few different ways that you could deal with this. I like to just rewrite this as a difference of squares. So what I'd like to do with this is write it as 36x squared minus 49 is going to be greater than or equal to 0. Factoring as a difference of squares, 6x plus 7, and then now 6x minus 7, and that's going to be greater than or equal to 0. You can, of course, add the 49 to both sides, divide by 36, and then consider now your critical values of the square root of that quantity and plot them. I would still prefer to factor it. I just think it makes the sketch and the understanding quite easy. Um, so let's go ahead and do that one. So we're going to have now this point right here. Let's put this here. That would be minus 7 over 6. We're going to get positive 7 over 6. And then we'll go ahead now and just sketch up a symmetric parabola about the y-axis. And it'll look something like so. So where is this going to be greater than or equal to 0? Greater than or equal to 0 to now the left of this critical value here. And then this critical value here will be the, to the right. So we can say that x will be less than or equal to minus 7 over 6. And in turn, x will be greater than or equal to positive 7 over 6. So that now gives us, and we'll just put in or, that gives us now the values that satisfy the inequality. OK, so that's a, a nice example, again, of a straightforward quadratic inequality. Sometimes we won't uh, just have a quadratic. We might have a quadratic and a linear. And we might be asked to find the values of x or find the value of p or the value of y that satisfy both of the inequalities. So let's take a quadratic. Let's go for x squared minus x minus 6. And we'll say that this is going to be less than and strictly less than 0. Uh, and let's take a linear one. Let's go for 2x minus 1. It's going to be greater than or equal to 0. We might be asked to find the values of x that satisfy both of these. 
Okay, let's go ahead now and do one of these. So if we just uh, start with this one, let's start with the, the linear one. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, put up a number line or a y-axis. Let's just go ahead and do that. So we can see now if I just uh, dealt with this one. So let's just go ahead and deal with this one. Uh, on that one right here, I could just now add one to both sides and divide by two. So x is going to be greater than or equal to one half. So let's go ahead and place that on the number line. So let's do that. That will be like so. So we'll have this point right here. So let's put one half just here. Okay, so we've got all values now that are going to be at least one half. And that'll keep going. And that'll be just here. So let's grab up a white pen and we'll do that there. Let's now consider the quadratic inequality. That looks like it'll factor x minus 3. What well, we can have x plus 2, and that's going to be less than and strictly less than 0. So let's check my factoring. That looks pretty good. So let's consider on here now the critical values. We're going to have minus 2, which is going to be, in fact, let's just make it look a bit more realistic um, as I've got one half there. We've got minus 2, so let's put minus 2. And that will be just here. And then we're going to have positive 3 just here. So if we consider now drawing a quadratic, and again, this quadratic isn't going to be brilliant um, as the scale is quite big. But it'll give you some idea of what's going on. We're looking now like so. There is my parabola. And we want to know where this is going to be now less than 0 and strictly less than 0. Well, that's going to be all this part right here. So we're going right the way up to 3. Now, what we want is now the region that satisfies both of these. Now, the region that satisfies both of these is the shaded region and where we have the line. If you like, what I'll do is put this on and show this clearly now. So the region that's satisfied by both is the area where we have shading and the line. We can see now if I extended this, and let's just do that from here upwards. Let's just make that a little bigger. There we go. Just move that into place. Let's grab uh, that's what I want. What we've got then is this part right here. So we've got the shaded region, and now we've got the, uh, the, the line right here. So what we can say is the following, and we need to be aware now of the signs that we've got. We can say that x will be now greater than or equal to one half, yet in turn strictly less than three. And that now gives us the values that satisfy this particular set of inequalities. So let's test a point in there. Let's take x is equal to one. So let's have a look. We've got one minus one minus six. That clearly is less than zero. And then if I put in one here, that's clearly going to be now greater than zero. So we test a point in and we test a point either side. But this now satisfies both. So put them on the same thing. You need the shading and you need the line. So an example now of a set of values to satisfy a linear and a quadratic. Let's move on and look at another application of quadratic inequalities. Let's say we now have uh, had to find the values of a set of values of k for now a quadratic and a, a, a quadratic uh, inequality. Let's write this down. Uh, and now we'll start with an equation. Let's go for 3x squared plus kx, uh, then minus x plus 3 is equal to 0. So what we're going to be asked to do with this particular equation is find the set of values for k such that this equation has no real roots. So right in here, we've got no real roots. So no real roots. So I can write, therefore now, b squared minus 4ac will be strictly less than zero. And this now is the discriminant. And we've looked at the discriminant in the past. So let's go ahead and look at it. This is in the correct form. This is in the form now, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So our value of a is going to be three. Our value of b, we've got kx minus x. That means we've got k minus one. Then the value of c is going to be equal to three. So let's see what we've got. ax squared, that's a three. We've got bx, so kx minus x is k minus one x. And then we've got three. So the discriminant, b squared, k minus one all squared, minus four, and then we're going to have now a, which is going to be three, and then we can have c, which is going to be three. 
this needs to be strictly less than zero. So at this stage, we've got k minus 1 all squared, and then we've got minus 36. Now, you can deal with that at that point to find critical regions, or instead you could factor it. So we can have k squared minus 2k, then we're going to have plus 1 minus 36, which is going to give me minus 35. So we could, if we want, factor that. You certainly don't have to, um, but it's an option for you. So k minus 7, and then we've got k plus 5 is going to be strictly less than 0. At that stage, if you want to go ahead and add the 36 to both sides, find the critical values, and then place them on, you can do. Often students prefer to just go ahead and factor it from there. Um, so what are we are going to have? We're going to have now 7 and minus 5. So let's put 7 just here. We've got now minus 5, which we put uh, just there. We're going to have now quadratic parabola is opening upwards. And this, remember, is now for k. We've got 0 here. We're interested in where this is going to be less and strictly less than 0. So we can see the values that satisfy that now. We've got k will be strictly greater than minus 5, yet in turn strictly less than 7. So strictly greater than minus 5, strictly less than 7. And again, check those values. Don't just rely on it. Pick a region. You have one region here to test the value. You have another region here to test the value. And you have another region just here. So we can see how using the discriminant will allow us now at this point to state b squared minus 4ac is going to be less than 0 for no real roots. And then we can go ahead, use a discriminant, and plot this to find the set of values for k that satisfy that. So there we go. That's a brief introduction to linear and quadratic inequalities. We've looked at some of the notation. We've looked at how to solve linear ones. We've looked at dividing and multiplying by a negative number. We've looked at basic examples of quadratics. We've combined the two. In a later video, I'll do some typical exam style questions, but this is seen more as a tool when you go on to later work, looking at using these inequalities to solve other problems.